Hello, everybody. Uh, it's good to be with you again as we continue our little traips through the Bible of beginnings and endings of the books. We've finished the Old Testament now and we're going to move into the New Testament this week. And just as I started the Old Testament with the first book there, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, so today we're going to be starting with the first book of the New Testament. So this is Matthew chapter 1, verse 1. An account of the genealogy of Jesus the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. There's quite a lot to unpack in that verse, um, so we'll just uh, work our way through it bit by bit. First of all, the genealogy. Now, this, for modern readers, can be a bit of a, a plodding thing that we have to sort of traipse through in order to get into the good stuff about the the nativity and Jesus' ministry and all the rest of it. But for Matthew's original audience, this was really important. That's why he started with it. You see, Matthew's original audience was Jewish primarily. And for the Jews, it was really important to know the the credentials of the person that was being talked about and the way that you'd know a person's credentials was by their genealogy by knowing who their family was matthew starts his account with a genealogy because he wants to show the the pedigree and the authority that jesus has and that and show why his audience should pay attention to what he's going to write. He says that it's the genealogy of Jesus the Messiah. Now, in a way, that's kind of a, a massive spoiler right at the start of the account, because it tells his audience exactly what to expect from this story. Jesus being the Messiah is kind of an identity claim. It's also a mission statement. It's saying that Jesus is the anointed chosen one of God, the one who would bring salvation and forgiveness of sins, the one who would bring freedom and who will suffer on our behalf. For anyone who was wanting to see then the Old Testament was shot through with messianic prophecies and promises. And passages like Psalm 22 or Isaiah 53 spoke of how the Messiah would suffer in order to bring freedom from the consequences of sin, salvation from being trapped in a life and, and eternity of of sin and death. Jesus is the Messiah. But then we're told about two particular people who are in his line, the son of David, the son of Abraham. So let's think about the son of David first of all. Now David was the great king of Israel. He was the one who represented national Israel at its peak. It was the golden age for for the nation state of Israel. David expanded Israel's borders. He was this great military commander. He won many, many battles for Israel. He was blessed by God. And being called the son of David not only means that he that Jesus is kind of tied to to this great king of Israel. But actually it means something more than that, because the son of David, the offspring of David, was told that they were going to be given the throne of David forever. You may remember I mentioned in a previous uh, one of these sessions that, that prophets were sometimes national prophets speaking to an entire nation of Israel and the world at large. Um, sometimes they were personal prophets. Now there was a prophet called Nathan who was kind of the king's prophet uh, when David was on the throne. And Nathan inquired of God on behalf of David about, uh, about stuff. And this is what God said about David to Nathan. 
This is 2 Samuel chapter 7. I will not take my steadfast love from him as I took it from Saul, whom I put away from before you. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure for ever before me. Your throne shall be established for ever. In accordance with all these words and with all this vision, Nathan spoke to David. You see, David had been promised that that the throne that was established in his name and his line would go on forever. And that looked like it was a forlorn hope when uh, the Assyrians came and conquered the northern tribes of Israel and then the Babylonians came a couple of centuries later. You may remember we talked about that with Daniel. But in Revelation, then we're given this, this vision of heaven and it says in Revelation chapter 5, One of the elders said to me, Don't weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, that is to say, you know, the son of David, the offspring of David, has conquered, so he may open the scroll and its seven seals. And then they turn and see a lamb as if it's been slain, and that's this, uh, this lion of Judah. It's a lamb that's been slain, and it opens these seals of the scrolls in this vision and then i heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them singing to the one who is seated on the throne and to the lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might for ever and ever and the four living creatures said amen and the elders fell down and worshipped so you see this son of david did establish and inherit the throne forever and ever. He's called the son of David. He's also called the son of Abraham. And for that, we have to, of course, go back to Genesis and look at the promise of God to Abraham. God promised that through his offspring, then the world would be blessed. This is uh, Genesis 22. He says, I will indeed bless you, and I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and as the sand that's on the seashore. Your offspring shall possess the gate of their enemies, and by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessing for themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. The promise of God through Abraham was that through his family, goodness and blessings would come to all the nations of the earth. In Jesus, we're told in that first verse of Matthew's Gospel, that promise of blessing to all the earth is coming to pass. In Jesus, that promise to David that his descendant would be on the throne forever is fulfilled. And in Jesus, all of those promises and prophecies about the Messiah throughout the Old Testament are fulfilled. What a great way to start the New Testament with this promise and this showing that Jesus is the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Well, take care of yourselves and I'll see you again soon for the last verse of Matthew's Gospel. God bless.